Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, August 15th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The World Magnetic Model has been updated for 2025 to 2030. We've got all the details, so, so stick with us. We also have a hurricane in the Atlantic, Hurricane Aaron. Maximum sustained winds at 85 miles per hour. Buckle up, full forecast ahead, and keep calm. It's boom time. Trump and Putin wrap up an extremely productive summit, but not there yet on ending the war. Trump and Putin say an agreement has been reached, but are mum on the details. And now the weather. La Nina watch issued for winter 2025-26. What it means for your favorite ski resorts. Well, hopefully this doesn't come true because it's going to continue to be dry and warm in the south if La Nina is in effect. And we hate that. And you know what that means? It's, it means that, well, places that will get a lot of snow are like Mount Baker. Timberline, Lodge in Oregon, Mount Bachelor, Jay Peak in Vermont, Whistler. And where will they be blanked? Well, down here in Wolf Creek. And that will be three years in a row where we have record low snow counts. So we are not hoping for La Nina in any way. Go away. And Hurricane Aaron is now brewing in the southern Atlantic Ocean, about to hit the Leeward Islands. Here are the key messages for Hurricane Aaron. Heavy rainfall tonight through Sunday across the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico may lead to isolated and locally considerable flash and urban flooding, along with landslides and mudslides. Tropical storm conditions are possible for portions of the northern Leeward Islands, where tropical storm watches are now in effect. Beginning on Saturday, as the core of Erin passes north of those islands, gusts to tropical storm force are possible in rain bands over portions of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico later this weekend. While the threat of direct impacts in the Bahamas and along the east coast of the United States appear to be gradually decreasing, there will still be a significant risk of dangerous surf and rip currents along the western Atlantic beaches next week. That means all of the East Coast. So heed the warnings and don't get sucked out to sea. The current spaghetti models show four models pushing this baby straight up towards Maine. The majority of them have it hooking out here into nowhere and one model passing closely to Bermuda. So hopefully the blue model is out of the question. The light green is also out of the question and the majority stays true. Good news for everybody. We're over at Tornado HQ Live, the severe weather map, and we've got seven severe weather morning, warnings, most significant all in South Dakota, one in Arizona. Say it ain't Sona. Yeah, we've got, yeah, way in the western Arizona basin. South Dakota lighting up. We've also got storms moving through uh, the central plains as well as the southeast. So lots of activity in the U.S., and now the full forecast. Aaron strengthens to a hurricane. Heavy rainfall possible in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and the upper Midwest as well as South Texas. Hurricane Aaron may bring isolated flash and urban flooding, landslides as well as mudslides and possible tropical storm conditions to Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands this weekend. So heed the warnings. Scattered thunderstorms and heavy rainfall may bring areas of flooding this weekend over the upper Midwest, we just showed you those pop-up storms. A tropical disturbance will bring locally heavy rain and mainly urban flash flooding to far southern Texas. Now we're going to take a look at these models and here you can see Aaron moving into the picture and rapidly moving away from the East Coast, just creating rip current dangers. Uh, no major flooding on the coast due to rainfall. But look what's right behind there. Another storm even more severe, dropping down to 940 millibars, could be smashing into the East Coast at the end of August. And now we're freezing up here. <laughs> so that is showing landfall August 27th, which is the day before my birthday. 
Holy macaroni. And that, at the end of the month, we've got a big list of stuff going on. We're going to be on Quite Frankly. Um, love that channel. And we've got friends coming in tomorrow, colleagues of mine from Temple University we're going to be spending the next two days with. So maybe we'll have some sparse activity. But we've got a big show tomorrow. We've got a premiere on Rumble. Um, so stay tuned for more updates. Take a look at this one-two punch. There's Aaron and something right behind it coming up in the mix. Let's take a look at the 10-day GFS model across the U.S. And we'll move it through here. Here is Saturday. A little activity in the Northern Plains. Sunday here, same activity. As you see Aaron approaching here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some activity. Lots of moisture popping up for the U.S. here on Wednesday and moving to the East Coast Thursday and Friday. That is the models, and we're sticking with them. A swarm over 100 earthquakes shakes northern Cali. Holy mackerel. More than 100 small earthquakes have been recorded near the Geysers geothermal field in northern California since Thursday. According to the USGS, the largest quake with a preliminary magnitude of 4.0 struck at 5.48 a.m. on Thursday. USGS seismologist San Hout told SF Gate within minutes, several magnitude 3.0 tremblers followed along with a cascade of much smaller ones. Ho said they have been, there have been 117 quakes in total, though they have been going down in magnitude like 0.3, which is teeny tiny. The seismic activity does not fit nearly into one single classification. Ho described it as a swarming sequence. Not quite a typical aftershock series, but not a classic swarm either. So what is he saying? Well, he's not saying anything. He's just being vague and a douchebag. So he can suck it. Worldwide, well, seismic update. Take a look at this. There's some of those quakes on the west coast of Cali. Raising nerves. Why you live there is anyone's guess. We've got activity continuing in the aftershock realm over in Kamchatka. And overall, worldwide activity is quite low. Worldwide Volcano News for the 15th. And do we have a list today? First on the list is San Gay to 22,000 feet. Popo to 20,000 feet. Liotolo to 6,000 feet. We've got Kirishima on the list. 6,000 foot puff there. Kluchiskoy continuing to puff to excessive levels, 36,000 foot blast today. Ibu on the list, puffing and passing. Swanasima, 6,000 foot puff there. Fuego to 14,000. Raventador, ongoing volcanic ash. Santa Guito to 14,000 feet. Sangay, volcanic ash emissions have been reported. Livotolo to 7,000 foot there. Ibu, puffing and passing as well. Kluchiskoy to 36,000. Santa Guito to 14,000. Swanasima! Exploded today. Fuego to 14,000. And we've got Katmai Volcano. No eruption, but resuspension to 6,000. What the heck does that mean? Anybody's guess? Ibu to 7,000 there. Semaru puffing and passing. Raventador as well. Kluchiskyoi to 30,000 feet. Wow, the Kamchatka is going bonkers for weeks. What a tweaks. And wrapping up the list is San Gay with a 19,000-foot puff, which is actually on the 16th. Space weather, we've got no sunspots at all visible, unless you call these pinprick sunspots. Nothing is coming around the limb. We're headed into solar minimum. Flaring is now on the B level. No geomagnetic storming possible, except for maybe August 18th. Maybe we have a, this coronal hole will be coupling with us. And it is trans-equatorial. So we'll say three days from now, we could see KP get up to four or five. We'll just see how this coronal hole does over the coming days. The U.S.-U.K. World Magnetic Model has been emailed to me today for 2025 to 2030. The 109-page PDF will be linked below. But what can we glean from it? Is there any information that is good? or necessary with the current magnetic excursion ongoing? Well, there are some maths and things that will get you very confused if you didn't graduate high school or even get into college and take a differential, well, any calculus. 
This is diff EQ. So big stuff here. But what do the models show? They show a major shift. Well, take a look. <clears throat> this is the South Atlantic anomaly, and it's growing and growing and becoming even larger. Something is afoot here as the magnetic excursion deepens. Here is the current pole position of the North Pole and the South Pole just off the coast of Antarctica here. And, well, lots have been happening. Let's take a look at the historic magnetic declination, and let's get rid of my mug. What you can see is in 1859, something shifted. For hundreds of years, the magnetic North Pole just moved around here above northern Canada. For hundreds of years, maybe a thousand years, it hasn't shifted. It was just moving around here for hundreds of years. And then in 1859, the Carrington event occurred. And what happened after that was a rapid shift in the magnetic field. It slowly, moved, it slowly began moving in an opposite direction. And by 1990, it started accelerating. Here we are, 1990, watch this. Boom! It's literally stratospheric and going off the charts. It moved more in just the last 30 years than it has in the last 500 years. So something is afoot with our magnetic pole. And it has all happened since the Carrington event with an acceleration happening in 1990, which rapidly moved the pole past the northern rotational pole and moving into Siberia. So we've got, well, it's happening, folks, and you're, well, you're living it. Greenland's melting glaciers are facilitating unprecedented ocean life growth. How dare it? according to NASA supercomputers. So the melting of Greenland is going to kill us all, but it's also causing unprecedented ocean life growth. Hmm. Let's check the data. Well, no, the, no, Greenland's ice is not melting. In fact, we have record gains during the melt season. We gained three gigatons of ice yesterday during the melt season. Yeah, there is no catastrophic melting of Greenland, but there apparently is unprecedented ocean life growth at the margin. So good news there, as Greenland packs on more ice than ever before in record territory during the melt season. Scientists crack open an 815 million year old rock and made an incredible discovery. Now this story is mind blowing. So Scientists have successfully extracted and analyzed ancient air trapped inside a rock for over 1,815 million years. This is before the Cambrian explosion, before life happened on Earth, and this is providing a direct glimpse into Earth's distant atmospheric past. This is mind-blowing stuff. The team's analysis revealed oxygen levels between 10.3 and 13.4% of the atmosphere during that time. When our current understanding, we thought it was just 2% during the late Precambrian, and we were wrong. For comparison, the modern Earth's atmosphere contains 20.9% oxygen, so 800 million years ago, we had just about half of that which makes way more sense than 2% oxygen. So it took a while for oxygen to build, billions of years on Earth, but once it did, well, we all made it. And here is the paper in Geology, just published um, August 1st. Paradigm shift in determining neoprotozoic atmospheric oxygen. Now, scientists have recently captured photos of a prehistoric fish thought to be extinct for 70 million years, and this is the Coelacanth, a fish known by fossils that was discovered maybe 100 years ago in a fish net. Well, they just swam next to this baby. Modern science met an ancient rumor in 1938 when museum curator Majuri Courtney Latimer pulled the first living specimen of Latimeria chulumnae 
from the South African net, shocking paleontologists who thought the group had died 70 million years earlier. And now we've got deep water scuba divers swimming with sealing kiths. Yeah, these are ancient fishes that lived in the Devonian seas 300 million years ago, thought to be extinct 70 million years ago, but still swimming in the ocean here in Sulawesi. Absolutely spectacular. What's even more impressive is this scuba diver is 400 feet below the surface. <laughs> the dumbest thing you could ever do. 2.65 million year old fossil teeth unearthed in Ethiopia opens up current understandings of human evolution. And here's the paper. Mysterious Denisovan interbreeding shaped the humans we are today. We don't know nothing about Homo sapiens or any sapiens or our past history. We know less than 1%. And every day we're getting more and more information. Denisovans, a mysterious human relative that apparently built log homes 300 or 400,000 years ago, left behind far more than a handful of fossils. They left genetic fingerprints in modern humans across the globe. Multiple interbreeding events with distinct Denisovan populations help shape the traits like high altitude survival in the Tibetans, cold weather adaptation in the Inuits, and enhanced immunity in all of us. I think I'm a Denisovan. I never get sick. Their influence spanned from Siberia to South America, and scientists are now uncovering how these genetics transform human evolution, even with such limited physical remains. Yeah, we don't have any fossils of any hominins, and so what we can piece together is very limited. We know nothing, period. And take a look at this drawing. This is not a photograph. It is a pencil drawing. My partner, Leah Shaper, has gotten into colored pencil drawing, and she's now drawing a Rottweiler before she attempts to tackle Gremlin and Halo. And, well, when I look at these eyes and I look at the structure of the nose, it's uncanny. I think Leah might be a demon because this is just too good to be true. What say you? Leave a comment below. And Elon Musk is offering a new deal for us and all of our viewers, the cheapest high-speed internet on the planet, $65 a month for your first year with Starlink and 50% off the kit. The kit is now just 175 bucks and 65 bucks a month for the fastest high-speed internet in the world, if you're still using cable or some other dumb DSL or something like that and paying over $65 a month, stop it. Get the Starlink now and we all win. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Half of you watching are unsubscribed. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please share the video, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications that you will never receive because they hate us. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. And that is amazing. Holy macaroni. Nee, nee, nee.